Hey everyone, Chris Sawyer here. The Varietal Show is back. Nice to see everyone. Um, I've got a great uh, bottle of wine in here, Beekeeper. Um, this is my great friend, Ian Blackburn, and he makes this fabulous wine. That's one of the many things he does. And uh, today, uh, it seems a little strange, white curtain behind us, all this kind of stuff going on. We are actually judging the Los Angeles International wine competition and this is a room at the, the fabulous Sheraton here at the uh, LA County Fair um, and we're just having a good time but um, Ian and I have a lot of things in common. Um, we're, uh, we're very well known as sommeliers in our two areas, me being Sonoma County, a lot of you guys know that, Napa Valley, Sonoma County and what I do there. Um, Ian, on the other hand, is Mr. Los Angeles. He is, <laughs> he is who I think about when I think about a great sommelier down here in this area and someone that really cares about the people and educating people about wine. Um, we'll talk about his wine in a minute. We'll talk about some other wines that he's packing here. But um, one of the things that Ian and I did that's a very special bond between the two of us, besides loving Zinfandel, um, yeah. we cannot talk enough about Zinfandel, <laughs> and we will talk about it. Um, it's a, it's about the movie that um, you and I were both featured in, and it's coming out, and it's probably already been out by the time that this movie, that this this uh, show of the the Bridal show, um, is out. But it's going to be released on March twenty second of two thousand twenty two, and uh, it is called the the perfect vintage. And it was a great honor for both Ian and I to be a part of this. So Ian, tell um, everyone a little bit about the movie, just from your perspective. This is going to be released nationally, and if you haven't seen it yet, it is a must. Um, and it'll be in Apple Plus and also in, in um, theaters across the nation. Tell everyone a little bit from your perspective about this movie. Uh, first of all, I'm, I'm blown away that it even became a movie because uh, a couple brothers were talking about doing it for a while and they wanted to interview me and they interviewed Chris and talk about the, the wine business and, oh, okay, I get approached all the time. I'm yeah. sure you do too. Yeah. Let's have a conversation. Let's see what we can do with that. Not a lot of noise, you know, usually comes back, yeah. but sure enough, like five, six years later, here's this beautiful movie that I, I mean, I, when I saw it, I was just like, <laughs> like set back, like, whoa, this is not only a movie, this is beautiful. Yeah. And they, he really uh, sewed it together in such a classy way. We couldn't, we, you know, we, we could have been a part of it. It could have been absolutely terrible. And it is absolutely beautiful. So absolutely, I'm super happy about that. Yeah, and there, there's another show that I did with Troy Christian, who directed this, and and uh, we got to give Tom Graves a lot of credit. Who's the? He's kind of the the big. He's the one that pr produced all the images of it. And I mean, the man works for NASA. You guys. I mean, he, there's drones, and then there's a drone that a guy that works for NASA has, and <laughs> it is very different. Yeah. Um, and you will see this in there, but. You know, you and I have a super bond that's going to last our lifetime because we're recorded on in a movie together. And this was uh, last year at the Sonoma International Film Festival that I got the um, thing about it. This is back in 2013 when this really started being made. And it's based on the 2013 vintage and um, actually a wine that got 100 points. Um, and I liked how Troy was very uh, honest. He said, you know... You guys, and I think Timothy, speaking on behalf of his brother, Timothy Milos, who's a great winemaker in Napa Valley and, and obviously Sonoma County, where this, this location's a little bit more Sonoma County, but up near Pride Mountain and up in the mountains of the Mayacamas. Mm -hmm. uh, but they were very clear about, like, it's kind of up to your own opinion if it's a 100-point wine or if it's not. You and I are sommeliers. We're there trying to find great wines for all of you to be drinking. That's really our job. Um, you know, 100 point scale doesn't mean much to us, but this site meant a lot to both of us. And it meant um, that they were really into talking to us about what our perspective on a perfect vintage would be. And we were right, obviously. Uh, but <laughs> no, just kidding. But the fact is that it's really about a site that has a personality that you can kind of encapsulate in a bottle. Speaking of which, uh, yeah, is, so here we go. That's a good intro. Wine. Yeah. So um, I hope you guys can watch um, the, the perfect um, vintage and 
uh, it will definitely, it's going to be all over the place. So you can watch it and you'll see us together. But um, how, you know, you and I have known each other. We've been Facebook buddies. We've been, you know, we follow each other. We judge competitions, not enough together. Um, and I don't get down here to LA and he doesn't get enough time up there. But we have something that really bonds us together. Another thing, which is Zinfandel. And we love Zinfandel. And believe me that Zinfandel advocates and producers, we love them so much. All that, that organization, the they're the best of the peeps. And if you guys know really true Zinfandel, then you know Zap. And that's the Zinfandel Advocates and Producers. They're doing something coming up here, and we'll see each other up in the Bay Area again. Mm -hmm. But the fact is, what got you, of all the things, and we're going to talk about some amazing wines. we got some Bordeaux-style wines sitting right here. But we're going to talk about your wine first, because to me, this really exemplifies someone that really gets what California is, and that's Zinfandel. In California, there's no Bordeaux here. Sorry, back in the 1850s. There's nothing of note here. It was really the Zinfandel that proved we could grow grapes here in California and, and high quality grapes. Um, what really started you starting this business? Uh, I, I mean, just love for the business, love for the people, love for the, the idea of getting my hands involved in a project like this. And I needed to learn. I mean, it's part of my, my way of learning is to get involved. And, uh, I wanted to study for the NW and learn about winemaking. And uh, one of my best friends is Clay Moritzen. And we love and Clay, Clay Moritzen. Clay Moritzen Vineyards. Yep. And his he and his team and his family they own some really important sites. And we planted this site together in 1998. Well, wow. and Clay told shared with me that it was part of his future with Rockpile. When that vineyard turned 10 years old, I just happened to be as I was talking to Clay about. Hey, and I'm thinking about, you know, maybe I should uh, come work with you or help make some wine. And he said, no, you need to make your own wine. <laughs> and I said, I do. He you goes, play. And if you, if you make it, you can make it at my place and you can use that vineyard we planted. And that could be your, how you get started. I mean, somebody hands you an opportunity like that, you don't say no. No. Um, I think that there's just some really amazing things here. This wine is, is beautiful. It's elegant. It's sophisticated. It's a Zinfandel, and a lot of people don't put those words together. And I, I think that they really need to when you talk about really true Zinfandel. It has a character that's all about the site. The Moritzins, uh, their history in Dry Creek Valley is a very deep history. I mean, we're talking 160, 170 years of history there. I mean, you want to talk about a family that you know came over from the old world and, and really farmed there. But they purchased properties there on that um, not only there in the, the, the valley, but on the mountain. Yeah. And this is what we're talking about, Rockpile. Rockpile, Sonoma County, where I live, born, raised. Luckily, I get to know this place and see it all the time, more than you. But, and Clay, <laughs> I don't give a little shout out to Emma, his great winemaker, too. She's amazing. Yep. Um, She's but, the backbone behind this one. Yeah, she pretty much is. And just she, remember, yeah. too, that the Mortsons actually had most of their land taken away from them to make Lake Sonoma. It's true. And so these mountains were actually given to them as like, oh, so we're gonna take this prime valley land away, turn it into a lake, and we're gonna give you these hilltops. And they were sheep farmers at that point. So this was a bad deal for them. This is bad, um, but, but, but it turned out good. But look at them now, you know? Yeah. And I'll say one other thing, if anyone out there likes the Oregon Ducks, uh, Clay was a linebacker for the Oregon Ducks football team. so. Just so you know, another reason, if you like football, he's amazing. He's got player. so many reasons to love him. And he's just really... <laughs> love you, Clay. Yeah. Yeah. Just a super high-quality, polished person, and I yeah. and, uh, love everything about him. So, yeah, absolutely, 100%. Um, so here we are. We're tasting through this wine, um, and it's just a, a beautiful, beautiful wine. I mean, pretty on the nose. Um, got some violets, got some licorice, got some a lot of things going on in it. Um, and we talk about these Zinfandels and people think we're, we're crazy, you know, um, that this is just, you know, it's just a red wine to you, to some people out there, where Cabernet is all about it. This was here way before Cabernet ever got to California. It proved what we could do here in California. And you have people like the Bialis and you have the people like uh, Tegan Pasolacqua from, uh, you know, from Turley and uh, the great Joel Peterson and, and people that we, 
you and I um, love these people. We're, mm -hmm. we're actually their biggest fans, but we're also their great friends. And what we do for them is be able to sell these wines to people and get people on board. And so this is a big deal that, you know, what we do as educators and, and also sommeliers that, you know, we get to help them sell a grape that should have been still selling. You know, if they wouldn't have ripped it all off in Napa Valley, you'd be drinking a lot more um, Zinfandel than you'd think. Um, because it's an amazing grape and it just has a personality. What personality do you think this has? What, how does it exemplify Rockpile? Uh, so, uh, first of all, you know, when you're making a wine from a vineyard and you really want to show off the vineyard, you don't necessarily want to go to a point where you're ripening away uh, the opportunity to smell and to kind of intersect with that vineyard. So to me, this wine shows off the minerality of Rockpile, the fact that it's you know um, higher elevation, that uh, this particular site is actually northwest facing, and it has a kind of an afternoon sun uh, exposure, and we have elevated acidity, elevated uh, really great pH. Uh, we pick this side of the hill almost three weeks after the other side. And so you get this, this sense of balance between the fruit, spice, and the smell of the underbrush that is growing everywhere in rock pile. And I, I really think it, that's what I'm trying to capture is the smell of the place. And that's why we put yeah. that, that on the label. Yeah, it's Secret Stones, Madrone, Madrone Springs Vineyard. Mm -hmm. Secret Stones. I mean, Jesus, you guys. I mean, <laughs> where do you find Secret Stones in your wines? I mean, in this wine you do. That's you know, right. that's where it's all about. Mm -hmm. um, it's a special wine. Uh, thank thank you, you for bringing it here to, to my hotel room. And we're going to go visit some more friends in a few minutes and drink some more fine wines. You tonight had a good Zoom show. Um, you have a great program down here in LA that is a great, you know, uh, you're, you're a great educator. Um, I mean, and you're a great friend of mine, but you know, you get to share these wines and I've been on his show before and, and I, I love it. I mean, I love it when you and I play off of each other yeah. as you guys are seeing in action right now, mm -hmm. right here on the, the varietal show. Mm -hmm. But tell everyone a little bit about your program and what you do. Um, well, I mean, I came into the wine world in uh, basically 1995, and there wasn't a lot of wine school options. Yeah. You know, there, there were a couple of programs that you could attend far away, but there wasn't anything very practical, and, and uh, I was just starting my wine career, and I needed to learn. And so I started teaching classes, and what that meant was basically I was orchestrating the class, but I would maybe bring in an expert, or I would study up and learn and share it with the people and and test some ideas and uh, and just try to continue to push myself and learn and uh, each day each class built on top of another and pretty soon you know 10 years later I got a pretty good uh, handle on things and then I started starting for the MW and pushed it up another couple of notches and and it's always been about the MW journey. meaning master of wine okay master you guys wine, I just yeah. I want to make that real clear. Master of Wine is very different than Master Sommelier. Um, there are different um, there are different worlds. Um, I'm a big fan of the the Master of Wine program. I have a lot of great friends that are part of that. You get Peter Marks, and you get uh, Martin Reyes, and you got Liz Liz Tosh. Zinfandel and, owns you know, um, Morgan yeah. Twain Peterson. And Morgan Twain Peterson. I mean, guys, so. you have some really great people, and it's a focus. I mean, it is yeah. you know your wines. Uh, it's not just about brown bagging it. It's about yeah. Knowing sites, taste, identification, yeah. Yeah. but also then understanding the you know the politics and the business of wine, and that's all stuff that I'm I'm incredibly excited about. So I continue that study now, and I hope to someday have put those initials at the end of my name. Yeah, but uh, it is uh, an ongoing work in in learning about this industry. It continues to provide challenges for us and growth opportunities and changes, and we. And so I've started pivoting in with the pandemic uh, to Zoom, and we started creating these weekly Zooms. And tonight we hosted a Zoom on uh, the idea of collecting wine, and you know you're buying wines right now. What do they taste like? Why do we buy them? And which wines should we buy that yeah. would be considered maybe an asset ten years from now or fifteen years from now? So 
we we uh, went and uh, did a little henchki. Uh, yeah. Baby Hill of Grace. Uh, is that what we've got? In this that's, that's that's number two. Number yeah. two. Okay. So yeah. look at this little thing that um, he sends everyone. <laughs> you guys. This yeah. is number two. Number two. Um, and then we've got three and four. And number one obviously is gone. Mount Edelstone. Uh, uh, yeah. So. Um, but the fact is that just you know you can smell. I mean this Australian kind of deep soil blood soul everything right there because of the eucalyptus mm. and its influence of eucalyptus in here. This is not like eucalyptus that you get in a lot of the Zinfandels and things like that from Contra Costa County here in California. This is like where the the, the eucalyptus vines or trees were actually, this is where we got them from actually, <laughs> it's from Australia. And it, it has a big impact there in a lot of this stuff. So you can smell it right there. It's got an olive -y kind of note yeah. to it too. And sage and olive. Sage, yeah. That's sage, really cool note. And what I love about it, these, these vines are, by the way, 100-year-old vines that have been dry farmed. And what the Henschkes are, are really just amazing family that preserve the, the vineyard. And they just take that information and don't over-extract it. They just really give you something that's almost restrained, you know, compared yeah. to other Australians. Oh, uh, it's, a, it's a super um, amazing wine. And... I mean, it reminds me as you and I were talking about earlier, you know, um, the Grange, uh, to the, you know, 1976 Grange from, which is a Cabernet um, Shiraz blend um, mm -hmm. and that wine and how it tasted young when it was, you know, I tasted it probably tw 15, 20 years ago, but it was made in 1976 and it was still young. It was yeah. the youngest on that whole block, yeah. the, the whole uh, list of wines that we were tasting for you know that wine advocate 20 year anniversary and and i you know this wine has that ability to do that and yeah. that's what's amazing about it is you and i sitting here tasting it and just having this you know out of body experience and everything <laughs> you guys can be doing this at home too if you follow his classes um but um i just really like this this is amazing so let's taste number uh three here sure. and so um this is giving you guys a, a sense of what you know what ian really offers here and uh Tell everyone about how to get a hold of you and how to look up these classes. Sure. So um, I have a master calendar on our website, uh, and you can access it from a couple different URLs. But we started as learnaboutwine.com, and then we started doing live events with Wine LA. So that's kind of where we're at in our transition. Now we're starting to put live events on the Wine LA site and Learn About Wine site. But if you go to this, these URLs, you'll see all these landing pages all in the same spot. Um, and our master calendar is there so you can see all of our zoom into wine.com events as well And every Wednesday night we zoom into wine on these different things. So I've been on that show you have and and uh, the, the Henschke wine that's about $200 bottle and You know, maybe you don't open it quite yet But we did just to get a peek and then you know what you can collect and um, and then uh, we move into Barolo with number three. I hope you like that one. Yeah, um, definitely all about structure. Mm. I mean, this is a big structured wine. Um, I love Barolo. I, I feel like I'm licking the rocks of the region. Um, you know, it is that um, kind of northern Italy, um, not super northern, but we're talking about Piedmont and, and this kind of area where you have these wines that you get a bunch of Pinot Noir makers from Sonoma County and Cabernet makers from Napa Valley and Syrah makers from mm. um, from uh, Paso Robles and you say Barolo and they're all going to gather. <laughs> they're all going to go, you got some? Oh, ooh, ooh. And it's that big of a deal. Obviously, you and I love this stuff, but this is a one of those wines that you, you know, it's tasting good in its youth, but you really think about the long term with For this sure. wine. This has a, the structure part is a big part of this muscle that it's got. The muscle will get into something savory and elegant and sophisticated as it matures, but do you have the, the ability to wait that long? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, that's up to you, you know. But for us, I, you know, I think that's why I have a cellar. Um, that's why I build these things. And there's certain wines that I just leave down there for a long time. and. When I get to share them with friends, it's a big deal. Well, yeah, the trick is to have a place to put them so you don't touch them. Yeah. Because you don't want to disturb them either. You want them just to be nice and quiet somewhere. 
and uh, good off-site site storage facilities usually what I recommend. Yeah. This is a uh, Giacosa, by the way, Filetto. Yeah. And uh, this Giacosa. is their estate, 2016. You buy it because it's Giacosa. You buy it because it's 2016. Great vintage, great producer. It's already expensive, but if you look at what Giacosa 85 or 90 are going for, um, or even 2000. They're going for four times what you can buy the 16 vintage for right now. And this is a wine that, okay, so maybe you don't make money off of it. It's going to be the greatest wine you've ever had <laughs> yeah. in about 10 years. So. Yeah. And remember what we went through, this 2020 stuff, you guys. Wine matters. You know, those moments that you have when you finally get to see your friends and you share things, and especially wines with stories about how you got your hands on it. Mm. If it was through this man or through me or through your trip to Italy, or or in this case, maybe Napa Valley. Mm -hmm. uh, is this what I think it is? Yeah, this is it. Okay, so tell everyone a little bit about this one. Sure, uh, so this is Dominus 2018, which was the number one wine in the world last year. And uh, Christian Moex, uh, I think it's like all of his dreams finally starting to come true here with <laughs> you know the, the, the this property really hitting its potential and its stride. Um, you're looking at a bottle of wine that's now approaching $400, but and, and maybe th five years ago was $200. So I think 10 years from now, these wines will continue to go, you know, uh, be a, an investment opportunity. I'm not so sure how what the what the ceiling is. I mean, nobody can even set it. I mean, we're looking at collectible Napa Valley wines surpassing $5,000 a bottle now. And uh, and so this this I think will rise with the tide. Yeah. Um, but it is absolutely immaculate winemaking. It is absolutely perfect. Uh, uh, 2018 story of the Napa Valley, and I love the tension, the, the balance, mm -hmm. the the presentation, and it's such the antithesis of what is, uh, so many other producers in the Napa Valley are doing. This is yeah. like made for another day for sure. Yeah. Um, I'm a big fan of uh, Christian and his whole staff there, and you know, um, a lot of people do not know that um, where where his lineage is. He was the president of Petrus. You know, Petrus is one of the greatest brands in the world. Um, we're talking about Bordeaux, one of the great houses of Bordeaux, and um, you know, to be really honest, uh, he was not going to inherit that that piece of property. But he went to University of California Davis, my alma mater. Oh, yeah, and I know and that. and. Uh, you know, and he went back in the 60s, a very smart man, and uh, eventually he decided his destiny was to actually invest in California and in Napa Valley. And uh, he got the help of the Mondavis to purchase his property. It's right there in Yachtville. You can't see it. I mean, I'm sorry to say you can't really visit it either. No. Um, it's, it's like the most, it's not walls around it but it's basically walls around it um you can't really visit it it's kind of like the drc of napa valley yeah. um it's not you know, open to the public but not really but a glorified agricultural yeah. shed and That's if you guys really want to look up a great story look up christopher sawyer and and dominus and you will find the story that i wrote on on them and and why christian right. and i are great friends um and it was a cover story that I wrote. And um, if you walk into the winery, you might just see that that photo on the wall. And that's my article that I wrote on Dominus wow. some years ago. And um, it was a um, it was quite the joy uh, to really sit down with Christian. And he owes me. I said after five years, um, we need to retaste all these wines that we tasted, <laughs> and we're due. Uh, all right. And Alexander Rubin, who took the pictures. You know we're going back, so <laughs> this is going to happen. And I will remind him that we, you and I, tasted this stuff. But this is the kind of experience you can have, you guys. And I think that, and you do such a great job here. I mean, people are lucky to have you down here in LA. But lucky you know what? This, them. but this is also <laughs> available on Zoom, and that's why you know he ran up here to do a Zoom show today, um, and I made sure that he had uh, dinner <laughs> waiting for him down there because you he's my friend. he's my good buddy, and and. We have a great time together, but the fact that we, let's go back to full circle, the fact that we were in a movie together is even cooler than that. And the fact that we got to taste his great Zinfandel, and thank you Clay Moritzen for mentioning Clay Moritzen in this too. How can people uh, pick up the Zinfandel? That's a very good yeah. question. So yeah. beekeepersellers.com. 
And uh, we're on Facebook and Instagram, but beekeepersellers.com is where it's available for sale. Our 18 vintage is where we're at right now. We're chasing the 17. But um, uh, my wines do like a, a little bit of time in the cellar. And uh, I'd love to be tasting this one in about a year more. Um, I think it'll really hit the, hit, the, hit the mark. But I like what I got there. I love my 17s. Yeah. So, I mean, it's been a great time. We got another day tomorrow of judging wine. and Another and, 100 uh, wines to taste. Yeah, another 100 wines to taste in each of our teams. And also, there's karaoke night tomorrow night. And that's a big I deal gotta prep. down here. I got to prep. And one thing I, I do want to give a shout out to the um, L.A. Um, County Fair. It's their 100-year anniversary, you guys. Mm. It's amazing. Here we are, and it's right behind us. And um, I mean, a hundred years, it's the oldest of uh, the fairs, you know, of this area. And, um, you know, California and our tradition here is, is very special. Zinfandel is the grape that we started with. Dominus and number one in the wine inspector is where we've gotten. And all of this is things that, you know, both you and I are very proud of. And we're very, um, we're very happy to be Californians. We're happy to share it with you guys. And so hey, I got another yeah, thing to yeah. tie back. Yeah. Just uh, in closing, my seventeen uh, ro uh, rock pile that we're tasting was number sixty-five in the wine uh, enthusiast last year. Number sixty-four, Dominus. What? How about that? What? what? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us. The uh, the varietal show will be back again, uh, but please check out that movie. Uh, the perfect vintage, perfect vintage. Um, and uh, you will see both Ian and I in this movie and um, it's going to be big they're going to make another one um, that we're working on right now and uh, look forward to some more stuff coming out uh, there's a lot of great things but Ian Blackburn is my great friend and he is he is um, my dear um, my dear friend but also you know he and I I'm the North, he's the South, and, and we represent. We represent! <laughs> Woo! Bringing it. Cheers. Thanks, brother. Thanks Thank so you. much. Wonderful to see you.